Hey man, it's Nahalian on the Halion Rocks. Uh, I've been checking out this cool new band called Stone Soul Foundation, and we actually got Shane Stillman, uh, drummer for the band, to call in on the Halion Rocks today. Shane, how you doing, man? I'm doing great, James. How are you? Oh, excellent, man. Uh, digging on new stuff, digging new rock and roll, um, continuing the fight to bring rock and roll to the masses that corporate radio won't play. There's a lot of great stuff, a lot of great music out there that. You know, the corporate world hasn't found a way to make money off of. They're not going to promote it. But you know what? We are. Well, uh, that's why we're here talking to you, Elian. Um, we uh, we really appreciate um, people like yourselves that uh, are getting the, the word of rock and roll out there to the people. Cool, man. Um, you know what? I'm just going to jump right in, it, man. I was I was checking out the video for Taking Back the U.S. I got to say that's got to be one of my top favorite videos right now, man. <laughs> Seriously, it got, it got you. It got you that quick, huh? Oh hell yeah, man! I, I'm I'm really getting into it. I like it. I like the message. I like the sound. I like the vibe of it, man. You know, it's kind of it's got some groove to it. It's got some rock and roll, and you know, it's there's there's everything to love about it, man. Yeah, it's um you know it's a good song for the times. Um, you know, we we wrote the song as we traveled around the U.S. and listened to people talk on the street, you know, where the place, different places we'd go and um, wrote a song one day and, you know, Sean, our lyricist, came up with the words as he usually does and um, it became Taking Back the U.S. and then, you know, it's a perfect time to release a song like that and we decided to do it and then the Kickstarter campaign that we had funded the video we did the shoot and it turned out uh, you know for our first attempt at making a concept video we were quite happy with it for sure yeah it turned out great it looks like it was fun to make and you know you had uh, some great casting and everything everybody fit their parts so great job on that man you just never know when you jump into something like that what's really going to happen but we had we had ideas um, but things just kind of fell into place. It, it was, it didn't take a lot of effort. Um, it was almost too easy. The all the different spaces that we shot. It was, you know, of course we're working with a producer that's that's got his stuff together too, you know. But um, it just seemed like everywhere we went, there was um, activity around us that fell into place um, unrehearsed, and uh, it was it was just a lot of fun. So we were. We're very happy with it, and hopefully with people like you helping get the word out there, it will get a lot more hits on the YouTube site and on our website, and, and it would be nice if it would go viral. That means our band would go viral. That's it, man. Uh, you know, I'm looking for looking for me forward right now to start pushing it because I think the message is right. It, it, it's a, an enjoyable video, so I'm going to be pushing the hell out of it. Not only on my site, but on our uh, when we do the Bleach Pains Radio thing, we're going to go ahead and we're going to broadcast this later on Bleach Pains Radio, and we'll uh, we'll definitely push people your way. So let's uh, let's jump in, man. Um, tell me about the band. Where did the name come from, and how did this thing all come to be? Well, we've been a band for eleven years, and I came into the world of Jeff Wiggins and Sean Muldoon who have been together since they were teenagers writing music. And uh, they happened to be looking for a drummer. Sean already had the name for the band chosen. Um, he, their idea was to create a band that was heavily blues-influenced, rock-influenced um, metal, you know, in, infusing funk in there and, and, and the soulful vibe of rock and roll, kind of making a melting pot of what we all love to listen to and um, bringing, you know, being a band that would to bring people together, like all walks of life. That was, our, that was our vision when we started. And absolutely, we were not going to play any cover songs. Of course, you know, who wants to make money? Anyhow, why would you play cover songs? <laughs> all right. <laughs> so so um, I auditioned with Sean and Jeff one evening and um, – they asked me if I'd be a part of the group, and they told me the name Stone Soul Foundation, and I was like, "Wow, that's that's a really cool name." And then they told me their, you know, their vision of what the band should could be and wanted they, what they wanted it to be, and I was totally on board with with everything that they were saying. So 
um, Sean, they, Sean and Jeff had the name already chosen in, in the idea. So um, Sean kind of explains it as stone being a, a solid, you know, like solid, the solidness of the band. The, the soul just speaks for itself. And the foundation is, you know, what every great thing is built on. It's a solid foundation. So it's the, name, the name fits the band, I think. Nice. I noticed, uh, man, you're a heavy hitter, dude. Uh, how did you cut your chops? What what uh, what got you into playing the drums, and what got you here, man? Well, I've I've been I've I played the tambourine in a band with a bunch of hippies when I was like five years old, growing up. Oh, my man. grandmother my grandmother owned a bar in Allegheny County, a little town called Cuba, New York. Um, my uncle was a twelve string guitarist and a singer, and my mother was a vocalist as well and my grandfather was a drunk and I was pretty much raised in my grandmother's bar around music twenty four seven. So early on I I had an ear for it and um had people in my family that were were players and you know, it, it's so it's been in my blood. I uh <clears throat> I didn't play a lot after well, during high school, I was in more of the sports and things, but I I went to college and, you know, was poor as hell and had this old swing and drum kit that I stripped down and painted bright green and just started playing in punk bands. So that's when I really started to really get serious into, like, playing in a, on a, in a band. Um, I took rudiment lessons and things like that when I was young in high school and stuff, but um, just wasn't really looking to, to form a band. I really didn't have people around me in the school I went to to really even form a band as a, as a young teenager. So when I went to college, I got more into it and then uh, just kept hammering away, learning how to sing and play drums, you know, do both at the same time and, and wrote songs with a bass player friend of mine for years. And, and then I met Sean and Jeff and that was uh, going on 12 years ago now. So, since Stone Soul started, it's been nonstop, um, rigorous, you know, rehearsal schedule and and gig schedule for the last 12 years. So really, when it comes right down to it, I really, I really honed in my chops playing with Jeff and and Sean and, and Dougie. Thanks, man. I know um, you guys are working on a new record, right? It's supposed to come out next year. How's uh, you guys started pre-production or anything on it yet, or what's planned? Well, we have- yeah, we haven't done any pre-production stuff yet. We we recorded the single, taken back to U.S. Obviously for the video, and we've been writing songs, um, trying them out here and there, on you know in the in the live uh, venue. But um, we're maybe six or seven songs into it, but nothing's really like the songs are still at a point where they could they could change a little bit. We haven't really nailed them down 100% because we've got, you know, other things going on. We're, we're at the Taken Back to U.S. video, plus we just shot a video in Chicago this last week um, for a movie a soundtrack that we were on for a, a movie called Sweet Leaf. So we yeah. shot that. This, yeah, it's this, it. Yeah, the movie's great, and we can I don't know, maybe talk more about that, but um, the producer shot the video for us because we were out in Chicago playing some shows. Um, over the last couple of weeks. So we, we've got that one that actually is out right now. And if you go to YouTube under Stone Soul Foundation and look for the for Sidewalker. Sidewalker, I checked that out too, man. Very cool. Yeah, you'll you'll really dig the video. This guy that did this film, is has, he's, he's top notch. Um, we shot it in an old, old broken down shipyard in Le Mans, Illinois. And it was, you know, it was a place where the murders kind of took place in the movie and things like that. So it was, it was a really cool scene. And um, working with a real pro, it was, um, it was a lot of fun. So we have that video as well that's out, and a third one that is being edited right now. So we'll have three fresh videos, and you know, we're kind of riding on those right now. And we're, you know, the cold weather's coming here pretty quick around New York State, so that really. It, that's a real time when we really can, you know, sit in a room when, the, when it's a blizzard outside and we can we can write more. We don't do as as much traveling 
during those winter months. So hopefully at the end of winter we'll have things um, ironed out and, you know, a good 12 songs at least to go on the new album. Nice. I got to thank Doug from New Ocean Media. I mean, he, he actually put me on your, um, put you guys on my radar and um, put me in touch with you guys. And, and you know, I've been checking you guys out since. And, you know, like I said, because <clears throat> corporate world is ignoring a lot of good rock and roll, you know, there's stuff that slips through the cracks. And, you know, Doug's doing a good job and, you know, people, people recommending other bands. That's how we get heard. And I'm so glad that, you know, he got in touch with me and uh, found you guys. He definitely, I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys got coming out and, you know, hopefully catch you guys on the road sometime. Yeah, I hope so too. Where are you, where are you based on it? I don't even know. Uh, right now I'm in New Mexico. Uh, right snap back between Arizona and uh, Texas. So, you know, so you're, you're it's, it's on the hell down in Mexico. That's What's bad that? lands down there, man. That's bad lands down in New Mexico. Bad lands. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> It can't, it can't be out here, you know, but, uh, you know, right now, like I said, you know, we're digging the sound of you guys. There was a few bands back in the day that kind of captured that whole thing that you guys are doing. And, uh, you know, I, I appreciate it because, you know, you encompass all forms of music and and uh, bring it all together. It's slow, it's organic, and it sounds natural. So, you know, again, good job. Well, thanks for saying that. And, you know, I have to say that uh, we are really lucky to have a unique writing style. We're, we're really lucky to have a guy like Sean that has such a voice, too. And, and Ken, is, he's able to write words extremely quick. He's, he's very quick with his pen. So um, having a singer that can write as well as Sean does is a is one of the hugest things ever. I mean, there's so many bands out there that we play with that just all they're doing is they're screaming. And I'm not knocking on bands, but it just seems like there's a, a lack of good old bluesy, soulful, you know, yeah. metal like singers. You know, they're just they're so few and far between anymore. Um, for us to have one is like, I think it really does set us apart in in some way. It does. It's different. It's a breath of fresh air. And you guys look like you you guys have fun. That's the cool thing about it is you know you're not just up there playing the part. You guys look like you know you go to a go to a Stone Soul Foundation show, and I'm guaranteeing that the audience and you guys all have a great time. Oh yeah, we always give 150 percent on the stage. There's no doubt about that. We we always play with vigor and we always love playing our songs. We we love playing all of our songs. That's, it's almost kind of weird. Cause there's no, there's no song on our set list any night that I look at and I'm like, oh man, I got to play that song again. <laughs> yeah. you, you know, I mean that would suck so bad if you were like Warrant and you had to play Cherry Pie every night because you know that's the song that made them famous and it's the song that they hate more than anything in the world. <laughs> but they're forced to have to play it. That, you know that would kind of, um, and I heard that on VH1 behind the music or something like that when they were talking about that. Um, but we're not at that point with any of our songs. Even the songs that we wrote 10 years ago, when we bring them back, it's like, you know, they're still fun to play. So, nice. And it helps that we all really get along as, as brothers together. You know, we, we were just on the road for 12 days in our van with our trailer and in one roadie. And we were just hanging out together a couple hours ago, just, just hanging out, having a couple of drinks after work. Just you know, like like, like we miss each other almost because it's like uh, it's 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 a good relationship with all of us. We're we're lucky like that too to get along and not have anybody in the group that has a big swelled up hat, act like an asshole every night. You know, that's cool, man. And it's still happening. You know, I get the sense that again, you know, what's cool about bands like yourself is you guys are you guys are doing it for the love of the music, and I think that's what. You know, started out back in the day, all these iconic bands and iconic songs before it became big business. You know, these guys were making art, they were making music for the love of making music. And they wrote some really iconic songs that, are, that have a lot of feeling and heart to them. And I think that's what's missing today with a lot of music. Yeah, it. I, I agree with that um, 100%. It seems like, well, there's so 
many distractions with with young musicians today. Um, I I have a 14 year old son that's a dynamite drummer right now. Really good. He's got really good chops. But they, you know, he's playing his Xbox with his buddies, you know, and they're doing this. It's like there's no real. I mean, there's a little focus, but not as much focus as musicians used to have back, you know, in the 60s or 70s or whenever when they when right. they played their instrument and that's what they did. You know, because that's what, you, oh, you have, all you have is a harmonica? Well, go play your harmonica. <laughs> that's all you got. That's your toy. That's your instrument. That's your everything. It's like if it had wheels on it, you'd drive it to the store. That's all you have. <laughs> you know? So um, I just think the, the dedication, you know, everybody wants everything really quick. And the hard, the hard work behind being a musician and being in a band that travels is way too hard for most people. That's true, man. I notice that a lot. You know, um, a lot of now with a lot of bands, or you know, I'm I'm just gonna throw it out there. There's some bands out there that are all they're doing is trying to find the right formula to write a hit song, and they're right. not truly writing from within. And you, and you're right. You know, there's you know I'm older. You know I'm you know I'm I'm in my late forties, so I've been around for quite a while. And there was a lot less distraction back in the day, you know, you're right. We would we would sit around and we would play, you know, with with our instruments and stuff and we would listen to music and we truly would listen to it. You know, we didn't it wasn't like uh, today everybody's switch, 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 you know, it's like eighty A D D T V watching, A D D radio watching. You know, we would put on a record and listen to the whole damn record. It wasn't like song, song, song. And I think that affected us differently. If that makes sense. Yeah, well, you know, vinyl because I was I'm I'm probably close to your age. I was born in '66, so okay. I was ra- I was raised around um, vinyl and or a track. Yep, me A-track. too. I mean, I remember the, my my old man having you know the White Album and Three Dogs Night and James Taylor eight tracks and you know. Um, freaking Steppenwolf and, and playing Butterfly and all those eight tracks are floating around in right. the mud, exactly. you know. And and uh, you know that big deck that was on the console, it was just it's, it's funny to think back and, and laugh at it. But um, that's really when music was really alive and really awesome. You know, the scratch of a that's needle true, on a certain table. You know, the scratch. I, I still spin vinyl in my house. I have, you know, some great old albums, and I just like to, um, you know, they're, 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 a lot of them are beat and warped at this point because they've gone through so many different places and dwellings. But <laughs> the ones that I have that I can still listen to are, um, I, I enjoy it. There's a whole different sound, you know. I, I think that, um, you know, this will date me again too, you know. Uh, Recording on the analog, you know, had a certain warmth and a certain um, difference to quality of the music. You know, now you can do so much more in the studio, but I think we've sacrificed, um, you know, some of the some of the subtle nuances you got from the analog equipment. Yeah, it's it's pretty much lost unless you can find somebody that knew the art of of recording that way. I mean, now you don't even need a singer to, to have a singer on your on an album, I mean, you can pretty much pitch shape or pitch shift any right. any voice to make it sound good, or you know, make anybody sound like a robot or, or whatever, like some of these yeah, no doubt. Know, pop singers do. It's it's like it doesn't even sound like you're listening to a person sing. It sounds like a it just sounds like a exactly sound feature or something. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't think that. I don't get that from you guys, man. I get an or there's a, a sense of there's an organic sense from you guys. I think that you know like that's that's what drew me to you guys listening to the songs. That's what drew me in was you know it's it's old school approach. Yeah, we try to keep our keep as natural as we can with our our guitar sounds, our voices when we record. Um, you know, we do a lot of background vocal harmonies. Um, in our recordings and, and live on stage. I mean, we, we, we love to be able to harmonize. I mean, Sean and I, Sean and Jeff and I, um, well, Jeff and I are the backup vocalist, and Sean is obviously the lead singer, but um, I do a lot of oohs and ahs in the background with Sean, and so, you know, 
being a being able to play drums and and do the backup vocal stuff um, along with Jeff, it it makes the music really nice and full. It gives it it's a whole other instrument in the mix and uh, very cool. It's all our natural voices. We don't have we don't even sing through effects units. You know, that's good, man. Effects. I've seen too many bands do that. Yeah, they suck. Like they're they're just like they're more yeah. of a hassle than they're worth. I think you know, just just go with your go with your voice and maybe put a little reverb on it, just just a little bit. You know, yep. just just warm it up. You know, take the highs and mids out of it and warm it up real nice and and just go from the heart. You know, so that's what we always try to do and and it it does set us apart. We've never wavered from that. So that's cool, man. Well, today like, we have been talking with. Shane from Stone Soul Foundation. Um, you know, where can people find you on the internet? Well, you can find us at on Facebook. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us at StoneSoulFoundation.com. dot com. Um, we're for sale. I mean, just just punch our name in, and, and all sorts of things come up. Nice man. Uh, well, you know, right now we're in one hundred and forty countries. If you got something to say to the world, man, right now is your time to say it. Well, what I want to say to the world is sooner or later we're going to be in a town near you, and hopefully you'll come and rock out with us and get a feel for what Stone Soul Foundation is all about. Beauty, man. I'm, I'm telling you guys right now, go to their YouTube channel. they got some pretty kick-ass videos up there. Um, they're, they're just a great band, man. I'm, I'm glad to have found them. I thank you for your time. I look forward to talking to you more again in the future, hopefully catching you on the road. Um, when you do have your record out, you know, we can do a follow up interview and you know, you're not done with us. We're gonna we're behind you. Myself and our radio show, Bleach Fangs Radio, you've got new family here in New Mexico and we're we're hundred percent behind you. Well Howie, and that is awesome, man. I have to say I'm um I will speak for all my bandmates when I say that we're very flattered when, when someone like you um, praises us the way that you have and speaks so highly of us. Uh, it it makes us want to keep moving on, you know. And we we do feel like we're a band that's that's ready on a, a national level, um, and hopefully a world level. And so you know, if you keep saying nice stuff about us and pushing our name out there, sooner or later it'll happen, and we can all have a big huge party and be like, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Straight from the mouth of Shane Stillman. <laughs> We're looking to dominate the world. Cool, man. Uh, it's been great talking to you. Uh, we'll talk to you next time. Right on, Helly, and thanks again for all the props, and uh, we'll see you around the block, brother. Cool. All right.